Hello, this is um, 10 Minutes with Tamara. This is a window blind edition. This is very disappointing. Um, we just found out that the blinds where we're staying have lead. But the interesting thing is it's not all the blinds, it's only some of the blinds. It's only actually exactly half of the blinds. So what we're gonna be doing is getting trash bags and moving them in place to where, um, you know, putting a trash bag right here and putting them right into the trash bag so they don't create dust because they do create dust. And so what I wanted to show you first, and actually, actually, Avi, can you um, do a zoom up? My, my son Avi is um, here. Um, if the, the thing is people always worry, right? People say, oh, I'm so worried. I'm freaked out. I have anxiety. I'm like, no, let's not worry about this. What can we do to make this better? So the first thing I know to do is we need to remove the blinds. But since we don't have the big garbage bags for them yet, uh, the very first thing I'm gonna do is take Clorox wipes or a similar product with surfactants, they're bleach free. And I'm going to wipe off the windowsill. And are you, you can do a zoom on this side. Mm -hmm. And so you, with these things, we always wipe in one direction. And if you can look, can you see all the dirt on that? Yes, Avi, or no? Yeah, kind of. Okay. And then we fold it in half and then we wipe in the same direction. So the first concern is for any lead contaminated dust on windowsills with leaded blinds. See how there's still dirt? Can you see the dirt? Yeah, now you can. So then we fold it in half in on the dirt and you always wipe in only one direction and we wipe it until there's no dirt. You also have to do each of the little crevices and ledges of the window. <laughs> Can you see the dirt? Oh, wow. That dirt is highly likely lead contaminated because of this blind. The blinds here tested positive at levels in the range of um, 8 to 16,000 parts per million lead. That's a lot. 90 parts per million lead and up is unsafe for surface coatings and children's toys. It's a little harder to go in the crevices, but there's all that dust that's probably all lead contaminated dust in the crevices. And I'm not using gloves because I'm not touching the dust itself and I'm gonna wash my hands after and I'm wiping in the same direction and I'm getting all of the dust off. And I'm being generous using, I just used the first one all the way for you guys, but I'm using as many of these as I'm comfortable using. That's why you want disposable wipes because if you don't use disposable wipes, you might not be as generous in terms of changing them more often. So I'm now gonna take a package of lead check swabs. So it says that there's painted wood, metal, vinyl, and plastic, and dust. There's an instruction manual in each one of these boxes. And with the instruction manual, the first thing you should do is you shake it and these little cards come out. And these little cards have lead on them. And what you need to do with these little cards is throw them out. So those go in the trash of leaded stuff pile. Um, when these originally came out, prior to 3M purchasing the company, they had um, the capability to test down to 600 parts per million. Okay, yeah, it still says, swa okay, here it goes. It says painted surfaces, lead containing paint is still used for many industrial applications. Uh, swabs reliably detect lead in paint at 0.5%, which is 5,000 parts per million. And lead check swabs may indicate lead in some paint films as low as 0.06% or 600 parts per million. I don't know if that language has changed or not, but the 600 parts per million is what I've been familiar with all the time. And uh, 5,000 is the um, EPA level for interventions. This is a lead check swab. Can everyone see the lead check swab? It's a paper sleeve and it is a, um, a vial with powder and liquid. The vial on the outside is plastic. When you crush the plastic, the glass breaks the inside vial of powder and then the glass breaks the inside vial of liquid and you shake it and it turns yellowish. Can you see the yellow okay mm -hmm. there? And then, um, it, you, you know, usually you leave it in the, in the tube, but you don't have to. So I'm squeezing out a little bit a drop so I know it's working and actually if you were gonna use these cards which I don't recommend using if you squeeze out a little bit a drop 
it's supposed to turn red on the card right away. I don't want to use the, so it's starting to turn red. Um, you can see it turning red there. It's red in the middle. So we're going up here with our yellow solution on the end and we're going to rub this on the blinds. I'm gonna wash my hands afterwards right here. And if it turns red or pink, that's an indicator of lead. And as you can see, these are turning pink right away. And per the instructions, this is an indicator of bioavailable lead on vinyl, um, which is a huge problem. And you can see how pink this is. Can you come up here to the windowsill so you can see the color really well? Okay, we got a little bit of extra lighting here so you can see better how bright red this uh, swab is. And you can clearly see from the extra light we brought in how there's red on the blinds. And um, that is just, uh, these are creating a bioavailable lead dust hazard. And it's just quite disturbing that these, these are actually recalled um, for years. I'm going to turn this light off. This brand is GenCraft. Um, and that's important to know. They're marked, whereas I'm gonna show you this other one over here. This one's lead free. It looks the same. It so looks the same. Um, and this does not have the GenCraft brand. It just has a warning, a choking warning. This has little dots like this. This is lead free. This has um, little bendy, it snaps when you bend it. It has rounded edges. This one's lead free. Um, the other qualities about this, it's got this kind of, I'm just looking, it's like a, I don't know, if is that a hexagon or something? Um, and the pulls on this one are oh, little trapezoids or triangles. So let's see how that's different. Boy, it, it looks exactly the same. It's got the same little dots. They look exactly the same. It's hard to tell the difference. And it, let's see how it snaps. It, it, the snap is a little bit harder, but it's hard to distinguish. And the pulls are slightly different. They're not really that different. And this thing is not that different. So it's really interesting how close they are, how you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell without testing. That's uh, lead in uh, blinds, in vinyl blinds. And I have to wash my hands now, but it's really important that we kind of look out for this. If you know the age of your house is from the 80s and that's when the vinyl blinds first came out, then you know that there's a concern with these blinds. The blinds in this house are the original blinds from when it was built in 1993. Leaded vinyl blinds have been found as late as the year 2000. And the nice thing is they, they will test positive with a lead check swab. So you can use that test effectively to determine if the lead on these blinds is there and if it's unsafe. And that is, um, again, like 16,000 parts per million lead, ranging from 5,000 to 16,000 parts per million lead. So quite a concerning amount of lead. And the steps to take, just to recap, are to wipe down all the dust that you have first, then put these things, remove them carefully by putting plastic down and putting them in a trash bag throwing them out and the only concern left behind is then I would after you remove the blind do another wipe down I would wash the window treatments in the laundry if you have a carpet that I would consider um, actually doing a, um, a shampooing of the carpet with um, probably actually two or three times to make sure to get lead, lead and lead dust from the blinds out of the carpet. Any questions Ari from the peanut gallery? Ah. Uh... Yeah, it's it seems like it'd be difficult not to get stressed about that. But yeah, it doesn't help to be stressed, at least. Yeah, it doesn't help to be stressed. Those are the key words. This is not an insurmountable problem. So it's definitely a, a thing that you can take care of quickly and efficiently. And yes, the lead industry should be held accountable for how did lead get into these blinds in the first place. But that's the political end of things. And that's another conversation. All right. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this 10 minutes with Tamara. And I'm going to be doing more little pieces like this with testing of consumer goods um, and information on how to address the issue. So uh, stay tuned for those. And I appreciate um, you tuning in to leadsafemama.com, tamarubin.com, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, and all the things. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>